I'm, I'm personally excited about this uh, panel and this topic. It came up when I chatted first with uh, Kevin um, around his background and his reflection on uh, some phenomenal career moves that he made that that often a lot of people might not be brave enough to make. And I think um, it's important to look not at the the, the management ladder of of moving up the, uh, the 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 pipeline from design to design and more a senior designer, but maybe you should look at pivoting to to different roles in different areas of the business. Um, I'm going to jump straight in um, to this because there's a lot to get through, uh, Kevin. Because you're on my top left, I'm going to start. With with you, if you could give us a little background on you and uh, your your uh, your kind of career to date, uh, in reflection of, of the topic. All right, good. Um, hi everyone. Uh, this is Kevin Lee, I'm currently Chief Product Officer at eBay Korea uh, here in Korea. Um, so to um, to the point that was made earlier, I I was and I'm still is I think. Uh, hardcore UX designers. Um, I got educated in the UX and I spent my last uh, 18 years or so just in UX field in various industries uh, from healthcare to consumer electronics, consumer goods, uh, e-commerce, uh, and then the payment uh, and back to the e-commerce now as a product uh, person. Um, so I think, the, I think today's conversation will be a lot around um, how do you um, or need to not just look upward from your own discipline perspective, which is, is not, nothing wrong with it, but you should take an opportunity when there is one to boldly decide to go a lateral to a different discipline uh, because at the end of the day, UX is not a singular discipline responsibility. It's a collection of everyone. So I think uh, so for me, it's kind of uh, worked out in the right time, right place with the right opportunity that requires my skill set and experience to be worked out. But at the same time, the employer perspective, they also have to look for someone like that that will be benefiting. So it has to be mutually agreed and understandable from that sense. But anyway, but that's my short um, introduction. I look forward to uh, talk to other panelists about uh, some stimulating topics that you guys will find interest. Yeah, Fatin, how about you? So tell us about your uh, brave move to Australia and, and uh, being from an engineering perspective. Uh, thanks, Catherine. So my story is a bit different than uh, Kevin as uh, I studied telecommunication engineering at university, got my master's degree in telecommunication engineering and programming. Then my, I landed my first job as a developer writing code C Sharp and .NET as she was saying in the previous uh, talk. Uh, my engineering degree and my passion for technology and software development in general led me to my next role as a mobile software engineer. And from there, uh, things changed as like my next career move was to do support for a SharePoint application at that time. Um, I used a lot of my development skills uh, in working at, uh, as support engineer as it helped me a lot in resolving like complex uh, customer issues and uh, troubleshooting. And then from support, I moved again to consultancy role where I was working with QA testers, um, uh, training them and providing them like workshops and training sessions on testing tools. And currently I work as a solution engineer at GitHub where I work very closely with the sales team at GitHub and I work with customers in APAC from small businesses to enterprises all over APAC. So you can see that in my journey is very different as I started developer support, consultancy, trainer, solution engineer. Uh, but one uh, common thing between all my different roles is that it's always uh, around the software development life cycle. It's always the software development and technology is at the heart, at the center of all the different roles that I took. And uh, I like the diverse, diversity of what I'm doing right now. And at the same time, I feel I can bring a lot from my development skills that I use in my current job as well as my in my previous job. So I always used my technical skills. I always brought my authentic knowledge and skills into every single uh, job that I took. Uh, but as you can see, it's not all the same. And this is kind of a summary of my career progress. And uh, as I mentioned, it's all around the software development lifecycle. 
And I feel that having that uh, diversity and that knowledge helps me to bring uh, something very different, a different perspective to the table, something new that other people might not uh, have the privilege to have. Sorry, and uh, yeah, that's really great, Fatan. And, and Ash, can you talk about uh, your move from India to the US and uh, then back to, uh, to, to, and then to Singapore, kind of similar reflection almost to, to what Kevin has been, has been doing. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, Kathy. Um, a quick introduction of me. I'm, I'm Ashwin. I'm the Senior Director of Product for, uh, for Food Panda Singapore. Um, and I agree with Kevin, right? There's nothing wrong in, in moving lateral uh, in your own function. Um, my journey, um, um, I'm from a middle class family in India. Like every brown parent, they forced me to become an engineer. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I became a good one. Um, and ended up in the US, uh, like, like every brown kid dreams, right? Um, I was in IBM, typical software consulting services company. I have a bit of a funny story how I moved from engineering to, to product. Um, naturally, I'm a very curious person. Um, back in the days, about 16, 17 years ago, engineers were treated as people who just code. They don't need to know the why, right? Here is your task, go code. Yeah, funny, those that .NET languages, Microsoft DFS. Um, and every time there was a new task given to me, I would go and ask my manager, um, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why? And everything comes in, I have 100 questions for him. So he couldn't take those questions. And he was like, look, um, there is an opening um, in the business analytics team where they need an engineer because they don't understand the engineering point. And naturally you're curious, why not you, you move there? I was like, hmm, okay, let's try that. So I moved into business analyst. Um, back in the days, business analyst was the fancy name for, for, for product. Um, and when I went to the team, I realized that the importance of knowing why, because what I was doing was completely different than the why, right? I could not connect what metrics and business impact we are trying to drive from the engineering side. Uh, and in the previous and Cheryl was saying, engineers were not involved in the early discussion and sessions and so wasn't I involved. And that's how I, I started my um, say product journey, uh, understanding UX, importance of design, importance of business metrics, how do you engage the customers? Um, and I took a lot of risks in my life without thinking what's going to happen, right? I was in a very safe space of IBM, you know, consulting, no job security. Um, I was trying to explore what it means to be in product. So I made a couple of good moves. Uh, some were good, some were bad. Um, and in the US, I, I traveled around all of the small startup companies because started just happening there back then. Uh, realized, okay, some are founder-led companies, some are don't understand what you want to do. And then Rocket happened to me where they were starting Zalora um, in, in Southeast Asia. And that's when my first true learning started as, as a product guy, because I understood how the business is run, how the product needs to be built for the consumers. And of course, being from an engineering background helps to, to decide how you want to build a software product. Uh, and naturally, I was I was with a lot of uh, diverse set of people, where I learned that there's a different ideas coming through, which can actually be implemented, which engineers are unaware of. Right? Uh, that's that's been my journey, and uh, I've been in Singapore for seven years, um, and I'm still learning about the culture, the people, the customers, the product that you build. That's a very 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 short and sweet experience of of my last 17 years. I can relate a lot, especially that moving from uh, India to US to Singapore. For me, it was moving from Lebanon to uh, Australia and having the same, like, you know, when you're uh, getting an engineering degree because back home there's more uh, um, unemployment and you need to be more educated. And then when you first move here, uh, it was easier to write code than having any customer facing uh, uh, challenges. So that was very similar. So I can relate a lot. I've used T-Shop, TFS all days, but now at least it's all on GitHub, no more TFS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the joys of changes. Um, yeah, sure. I have a few things to ask around the the, the companies that that you've worked for, but I'll I'll ask um, uh, Kevin first, just because you mentioned something in the beginning around companies need to meet in the middle, um, and I thought that was a very interesting point. So uh, I believe, could you elaborate more on on what you meant by that? Yeah, so I think the, well, I feel, first of all, I feel a little bad that I, my main intro was very short and compared to Fatman and Ashwan. So I'll try to catch up here. Um, <laughs> and I, I assume that the audience is a mix of, you know, designers and you know, software engineers or products. So I'll just address as a generalist. Um, but, I, you know, I think the, when I meant by the companies to meet in halfway, um, I think we all are, uh, as a panelist, and especially myself, been in an interview from an interviewee perspective, also interviewer perspective, I don't know, uh, probably a thousand times already in my career. And what you see nowadays, um, especially as I move from full-time design leaders to a full-time now CPO or product leader, uh, is that there are a growing number of companies who start to realize that as I said before, experience, you know, customer experience isn't necessarily a owned by or responsible by a chief design officer, which many companies start to have, which means that there's recognition of importance of it. But having said that, we all know, and this is something that I always talk about, in order to build a product and ship the product, no single discipline can do it, right? Designers can do at best building a design prototype validates it, but that's it. They cannot write a code like software engineers do. So there's no way that design alone can build a product and ship the product, let alone product managers that can build these great use cases, right? Edge cases, understand customers and translate the business requirements and put a KPI around it. But that's it, that's all they can do. And the software engineers, they're the little dangerous people where they can actually code and they can do some UX around it but end up building a very bad user experience because no offense, but they you know need to properly understand the user experience of it. So when these three disciplines come together, this is where the magic happens. And employer perspective, they used to look at like Ash Ashwin's case, right? That the, oh, great software engineers, great technical background, and doing a product you know leadership role. So why don't you do this? And which is a really large portion of IT companies doing that trend. And what I've seen recently is that while they're doing it, they start recognizing the lack of truly understanding end-to-end -end customer experience. And this isn't about how the UI is rendered. This isn't about how a single little piece of widget that needs to be a function that creates a CTR or CVR or the KPI. This is really about understanding the needs of customer from end-to-end -end perspective. And I think, you know, for my case, I think my biggest takeaway from my own transition experience is that regardless of your product background or engineering background or the design background, once you have to have this basic level of CPS to KPI through translation, a customer problem statement, and as, a, as a Ashwin talked about, I definitely relate to it. It doesn't matter. You can be the greatest designer in the world. If you're customer understanding ends up with just pre-pictures. I hate the word, by the way, but I have to use it to stimulate the audience. If you end up just pre-pictures, you are nowhere near being a great designer. You're just a artist. Now, if you're just engineers who loves to write, you know, 10,000 lines of code when someone else can write 20,000 lines of code, great. But doesn't mean that you are the greatest software engineers um, and product managers as well. So I think, when you have to have this connection between, I know the clear customer problem statement, and I know how this ties to the business KPI, whether it's GMV, whether it's uh, you know, the uh, click rate, uh, whether it's a conversion, whatever that is, which is really the foreign language to a lot of designers, to be honest, uh, less so for the engineers and the product managers, this is where you start to get very blurred with your core competency. But often in the past, it's been viewed as don't go there. You want to be specialist. And then there's a still a lot of side of uh, debates about being generalist is good. But I think it's not about the argument between specialists and generalists. It's just core competency nowadays required by many companies. So I think my success of making transition wasn't necessarily about 
how I have a very good track record as a design leaders, um, but it's rather through the work that I've done as a design leaders, I always have this connection that I always ask that question, like Ashwin, you're saying, I always ask why. And then I always ask the other way around, why this great user experience doesn't add up to be the great product launch. And I would try to connect that dot between, and that forced me to understand customer needs to a business needs. And those two things are necessarily the same thing. And when you may be able to connect that, I think of making that lateral move becomes very natural, not necessarily by the your eyes first, but by the employer, because they see you as a oh, I didn't know that you were able to do this through the conversation. And that conversation leads you to, would you like to, something that you never expected to, but that's where the open door opportunity for a lot of things that you just shutting down because you always look for you know, design specific career or engineer specific career, which is you know, not to say that it's wrong, but I think the world of opportunities are much greater than your own discipline if that's what you're looking to do in your career. So. I think Ash, you had a similar story to that from your uh, your your failure piece on uh, the your your old boss back in the day um, when you were in your developer role. I think you could probably say say a little add to that. Yes, um, I would agree to that. And um, those days are gone, right? Um, back in the days, as I said earlier, engineers were not involved. We didn't know what was happening. But over the period of time. Um, this magic has started to happen where engineers have started taking more interest in the business KPIs and how we want to do. And they have, over time, they've become so smart to disconnect the business KPI with the customer KPIs, right? I, I deal with on it every day. And in a very similar way, uh, product designers have sort of become half product managers. They are focusing a lot on the customer journeys and customer KPI, but when they do that discovery work, when they go ahead and ask these questions, we realize that there is a there is a gap between what business wants to achieve and what customer wants, right? And there comes a challenge where, okay, should we focus on customer needs or should we focus on on business needs? Let's let's just be honest, right? We all say in all of the fancy interviews, we need to focus on the customer. In the end, in the four closed door in the board meeting, like, look, this is the business metric. We need to drive GMV. We need to drive, I don't know, conversion rate. And we make decisions um, on behalf of customers, right? And then that's one spectrum. The other end of the spectrum are people like Steve Jobs who said, customer don't know what they want until you give them what they want, right? So there are two extremes on how do you bring these, these together? Uh, it's, it's been a challenge. It's an eternal challenge. And I've learned that perfect product never exists. It just evolves over a period of time. Um, and as I said, uh, I learn every day. Uh, we operate in 12 diverse market. And it's very difficult to build a product which is consumer centric. And now we are in an era where um, a lot of product designers want to move laterally in uh, product management because they think that's valuable and vice versa. And we also have a case where engineers say, look, I have, I enjoy coding, but I think I'm more valuable if I become a designer and, and the product. So these organizations move, people are leaving their core skill set and trying to explore uh, a different function is exciting because as Kevin said, that's where magic starts to happen because now I have a person who is an engineer, but is a product manager too, and he could he could create magic, right? And vice versa with design and product. I mean, if I just uh, add a few things just to what Ashan said, and I'm gonna to relate to what Patton said about soft life, software life cycle, right? Or a product development life cycle. Um, I think that's a perfect metaphor. Every single stages of those life cycle, you have to have a different, different skill set. So that's something that we all need to have in your head. No single person or team is more important than the others. They all need to come in at the right place, right time to work together. Um, and I think the, I give you an example. We recently made a massive platform change on one of the flagship um, app, the e-commerce app in here in eBay Korea. Um, and, and that required backend engineers to work together with the front end, but also the, the user experience team and the product management team. Um, here's a one point where Ashwin, you said connecting the dot is very difficult. 
Now, of course, just like any other company, we launched the customer journey map exercise, massive, you know, a couple hundred customers, interviews and immersions, all this stuff. We've done it, checkbox, right? You extracted this beautiful insights that almost give you goosebump. Man, if we were able to build this way, we're going to be winning the market. And, and as you go into that development, engineers start coming up with all these reasons why we couldn't do it, right? It could be platform reasons. It could be uh, just taking too long. We did the wrong t-shirt sizing exercise, right? Or the edge cases come up that put you delay mode. All these things, something that most of the designers don't understand or do not want to understand. Because they're focused on the face value of a UI UX. But that's not the product. That is just a cover, right? It's almost like a cover of the book, right? Now you need to make users open the cover of the book, which it doesn't require great UX, but now you have to go into contents. Content that has been rendered at the right speed, right? Because the loading time is this too slow, you're gonna lose your customers. So all those things, sometimes designers don't have preview to it, nor interest to understand that. And then they instead put a blame on software engineers to not doing their job. But in fact, they're doing best they can do to make it happen. And then product managers being squeezed in between, being a translator, getting blamed from designers and then turn around and telling engineers what to do and the engineers are telling product managers you know, stop blaming us because you, are, you have to write the right use cases to scope it right, all this stuff. My point is that I think to Asian's point, it's very important for us to understand that when you have the totality of the view, that's when you are ready for the next job, not vertically, but laterally. Because don't be afraid of having that moment of truth where OMG, I am now thinking like a product manager, how dare? I ever think like product manager, I'm a designer or vice versa. Embrace that change that organically came up to you. And that's a signal that you need to start jump, not up, but jump to the next door of your other companies that you hope that you want to make more contribution because now you're ready. So I think I just want to share that, that there's evidence within yourself that tell you all these times that you are ready to jump to the lateral and you are the one who's stopping you from making that. So that's a very important realization. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, you, you, you've touched on parallel and vertical moves, right? Um, at least in Asia in the last seven years of my, of, my, of my life in Asia, I've learned that people, regardless of what they want to do, they want to they look for a vertical move, right? It's, it's an Asian culture where you want to be leading people, you want to be managing people, and they connect to connect as a sense of pride, right? It's an Asian culture, right? I'm not generalizing it, but as far as I understand Southeast Asia, Asia Pacific, the thing that, okay, that sense of pride, I'm managing such a huge team, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's run behind uh, excellence. Success would follow you, right? What these younger generation millennials are trying to do is not learn the art or skill and master that. Rather, they are too focused on just going up the ladder as fast as possible without acquiring that, that knowledge. Um, and that's very important. As an individual, you need, to, you need to take a step back and see what do you enjoy in your day-to-day -day life, right? Uh, is that something that you wake up in the morning and that excites you, right? Um, that's missing in majority of the people as everybody, at least in my team, right, in my previous companies, everybody's at least 95, 98% of the people are looking for that vertical move rather than a lateral move where they, can, they could be an actually a good product designer, engineer, or, um, or a product manager, right? Um, that's something is a growing concern me as a, for me as an individual because people are leaving their core skill set and which they are good at and just running behind success and they treat success as managing team people, fancy titles, um, um, and, and leading the teams. Yeah, I, I just want to add to that. You're 100% right, as like fancy titles and salary are the main uh, goals for everyone looking for their next career move. But at the same time, especially with COVID and post-COVID, as you mentioned, like um, being motivated, being happy in what you're doing, that job satisfaction that you get from doing the job is very important so you can be really good hired and you can be really good at what you're doing and um, having there are few other uh, few other factors like for me having the flexibility having a 
uh, work-life balance. These are important factors for me because like with a young family, these are extra factors that I look and take into consideration when I'm thinking about my next career move. It's not just about the job title or the salary. So some people will be like, I want to become a manager. And st- sometimes managing other people, it's not made for everyone. It's not something that an- every- anyone have the skill set to be uh, dealing with other people and managing and leading teams. And some people might be just want to deep dive into one specific uh, uh, topic or domain and become the subject matter expert. And that's fine because we we need their expertise as well. And these are uh, very valuable. I've seen a coworker who didn't want to get into management role just because he really likes to stay technical. He really liked to be writing code. And that's what keeps him motivated. And he was like trying his best not to get into management roles, even after years of experience, just because he was um, into coding and more motivated from that side. So it's, uh, I feel like there's no one fit for everyone. Some people might get into management roles. Some people might become subject matter expert in specific, uh, but for me, my experience was different as like, as I mentioned, I took lots of different um, hats, but all around software. And I feel like having that uh, general knowledge about all of the different uh, roles is um, very valuable for uh, that I can I can bring that value to the team. Yeah, I think Fatan, your 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 experience in uh, of, of moving career has been very good. Uh, you've you've used the engineering side when you there was language barriers. You've taken a lot of things as opportunities, and I think that's an important one to share with people. Um, yeah, that's correct. I originally come from Lebanon and then I got my first job in Australia. So coming here at the beginning, it was easier for me to just try to code because I wasn't ready to do any uh, customer facing challenges. And then later on, when I became more comfortable, more confident, I really enjoyed customer facing uh, uh, experience. And I'm like, I wanted to do more of that. And as you can see from support and uh, training and consultancy, so they're all uh, roles that needs a combination of technical skills plus um, having that uh, customer experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's just a, uh, a comment here, not a question um, from Sigit. Uh, Kevin, we need more leaders like you. <laughs> um, and I think that it is a good point. Um, and, and it sings back to what you were saying about the companies need to, to take ownership of, of growing uh, getting the all-rounded person i think is what you're all trying to say it's it's um and i think uh, i appreciate the comment and if i just return the comment with my um favor to all of you uh sometimes i use this tactic in my own interview process because again i am you know from a sense of employer perspective prospect right i'm the in- candidate so i do have to do interviews and uh but whenever i do and have an opportunity to do so um, I always use tactic of I ask people that I'm talking to their, their background. You know, this is something that usually they don't talk about, right? They they want to know your background because you are the interviewee, you are the interviewer. But I always ask as interviewee, so tell me about your background, you know, Mr. or you know, Miss X. And then they were stunned at the first because who's asking question who? But I want to know because I want to know the compatibility. If you are coming from very diverse background. Now I can work with you, right? Of course, I don't tell them, but I know in my heart. Because sometimes we look for the face value of uh, entitlement or the company. There's nothing wrong with that, right? We do need it at some point to give you the platform to grow, uh, whether vertically or you know, laterally. But at some point, as I call it, get matured, um, that's not the only thing they're looking, look, looking for, as the Fatin said, right? And I think the, the way to find out is in the interview process, ask where they come from, what kind of track that they came into their own role that they are doing now. Because when you are working with people that have a similar thinking pattern, that's really exciting. That's really fun. Doesn't matter you are the manager or the individual contributor, you're having fun. And I think that's most important at work. But if you're only looking for fast value, you're going to be mostly struggling within a year and you're going to look for a different job. And it's a, it's a loss for the company um, and it's a loss for yourself because you are not actually learning much other than wasting your time sulking around. So I think that's something I would ask everyone to think about that you do look for your career advancement, but to do it, make sure that who you are working with and their background, because that's 
something that um, will give you the uh, a silver bullet for what you might be not looking for, even though that may be something that you were tempted to look for. So. Can I add just one more thing? Um, I That's so true because if everyone, even for the organization, if everyone shares the same background and perspective, they're not going to have the opportunity to be innovative. They're not going to be able to have that unique environment. They're not going to have different opinions because like different opinions are the ones are going to lead to new ideas. So diversity is very important. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are literally out of time. I will quickly ask you to, if you go to Slack, all three of you, and please write down in one very short sentence, what's the key takeaway you want uh, to take from that? And that, put that in the Ask the Speakers channel. Um, thank you uh, to Kevin, uh, Ash, and, and Fatin. You are, all three of you are wonderful. And uh, I will sign off for now. Um,